Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for the fellowship that we can have together around teaching of the word. And may we have our minds enlightened. May you open our minds that we might be receptible, receptive of the words that and the teaching that we receive today. We thank you for the fellowship that we can have in this place and in this church. What a privilege it is. And we'll be careful to give you the praise. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I want to ask you, do you believe, hold this, this is the Holy Bible, do you believe that that's God's Word? Yes. Okay. On that. Richard, hold that book. What does it say on it? Translations of the whole Bible. Do you believe that's the Bible? Oh, uh, yeah. And I'm not going to ask for Kendra, <laughs> it says Holy Bible. Is that lying? How about the Luke word? Is that lying? Is that true? Well, I don't know. I haven't read it. This one? Yes. It says uh, Job to Malachi. So yes. That's a whole one. Well, do you, believe, do you believe that's the Bible? Well, let me see. <laughs> I'm very skeptical. I hate to say. Okay. Good job, Kendra. <laughs> I'm glad you are. <laughs> What causes a person to desire to know God's Word really? Here's, my, here's what I'm trying to accomplish. No matter what Bible you have in your hand, if you don't desire to read it, it makes no difference what kind of Bible you have in your hand. It doesn't matter what you say, you don't agree, if you're not reading it, you haven't accomplished the purpose that God has for us to do. That's right. Once, I once heard a dear old salvationist soldier say in a discussion regarding which Bible translation is best to use. <coughs> he said, I used the King James Version. If it was good enough for Jesus to read, it's good enough for me. Jesus never read it. <laughs> and I asked a preacher friend of mine recently, when, I, when, you, know, when you get older, when you say recently, 20 years ago, don't get choked on it. Recently, <laughs> recently on that comment, recently he said, I believe in the King James because Peter and John, when they were in jail, they read from the King James. <laughs> people often say, people often ask me, which translation is best? Now, what Bible should I be reading? I used to respond, and basically I still do to some degree. The King James, of course. Why do you need another Bible if you have a good old King James? I said that until 1980 probably. <laughs> I didn't think there was any other translation. I've heard that all of my life. There is no other translation. Most of my pastor friends will say it is not a translation. Most of my preacher friends will say it is not a translation. For us Baptists, we have always believed there was only one church and that's the Baptist church. And it's not only the Baptist church, it has to be an independent Baptist church. And it can't be just any independent Baptist church, it's got to be a World Baptist Fellowship Baptist church. And it is not an independent, fundamental Baptist church, World Baptist Fellowship, unless you have owned it, we only use 
the King James 1611. Now that is what we were taught and believed. Yep. Now I realize all that was wrong, and I'm going to tell you in a few minutes. For that matter, most of us believe there was only one Bible, and that was a King James. And we believe it was not a translation, but the original copy of the original Bible. I believe that most of my life that the King James was the original copy of the original Bible. Many of us, to even have another copy in our possession, was a sin. We would not dare read another Bible of any kind, nor go to any other kind of Baptist church. And if a Baptist preacher came into my library and saw any other author that was not a Baptist, he would call, he would call me on it. And that was until when I left Alton in 1996, preachers were still doing that. While in seminary, I don't remember ever hearing about another translation of the Bible. I never studied how we got our Bible. I only believed that there was one Bible, and that was the good old King James. So when did you get over that idea that the King James was not the only Bible? It became, it became a shock to me that there was another group of people that weren't Baptists. I, I was a total shock that when I realized that there was other denominations other than the Baptists. I was floored. I'm seriously, I was floored. I didn't know there were Presbyterians. I did not know there were brethren. I did think I remember there was a hole in this church because I went to one of their churches one time and I saw them rolling down the aisles and I thought, well, Lord, have mercy. What kind of church is this? And I was about nine years old. But I did not realize that there was even another fellowship of believers other than the World Baptist Fellowship. I had... I have argued that 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 over the last 10 weeks applies to all scripture, not just the original Greek and Hebrew manuscripts, and that it has nothing to do with how scripture was written, but everything to do with how God speaks to us through scripture to make it profitable, meaningful, and inspiring in our lives. So in studying 2 Timothy chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 16, what I have arrived at that and will continue to talk in the next couple of months is that not only is the Scripture God's Word, it is more than God's Word. It is profitable and it's meaningful and it's inspiring to our lives. Now that's what the text teaches us and that's what I have been trying to teach you the last eight week, ten weeks. The question should be, why did you change your mind? What caused you to change your mind that you believed in other translations could indeed, after all, be the Word of God? Would you say that, do you feel, do you feel guilty by changing your mind, someone asked recently? Aren't you feeling guilty that you now believe that the Bible consists of more than just the King James? And I said, well, it has taken me about 20 years to get over the fact that there is indeed another translation that could possibly, you know, be the Bible that you actually could read without feeling guilty. <clears throat> When I learned that Jesus didn't read from the King James, nor Peter and James and John, nor Paul, that was a real shock to me. I really thought that the Bible was trans the Bible that J Jesus had was really the King James. It was so revered. And when I learned that the King James was a translation, I was shocked because I had never heard any of my professors ever tell me that King James was a translation. 
from a translation. I was totally shocked when I learned that the Bible was written in Greek and Hebrew. I wondered if they had tra I wondered if they had done that from the King James, and that they had not verified, the, you know, the King, you know, the Greek. In other words, they looked at King James and made sure that the Greek said the same thing that King James did. I was extremely shocked, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be facetious. Did I put a little sign on it that said I saw a bumper sticker? If it ain't yeah. King James, it ain't Bible. <laughs> Except ye repent, ye shall all will likewise perish. Many of my Baptist friends believe you cannot be saved if you don't have a King James. <clears throat> Now you think I'm silly, but I'm not. That's that true. that is how I was raised, and I very well. And it had to be the 1611 edition. You understand that the King James has been translated and changed six times since 1611. Actually. If they had got it right, if they had got it right. If they had got it right the first time, they would never have had to make another translation, but they didn't. Anyway. Oh, Charles, what? There's actually been 27 revised. Well, it may. Revision. Yeah, but not in the first several years. <coughs> not in this early year. Okay. No, no, not in the early years. Should then, should then, we feel, should then, we feel guilty in having another Bible in our homes. In other words, if I come to your house, would you be reluctant to pull out your NIV? If I came to your house, would you be reluctant that you have the New Century Bible? No. My wife still has a problem with that. She'll say, Charles, if you don't mind, I'm going to read out of the NIV today. And I said, you better not, you'll go to hell. <laughs> So why do you believe that translations are okay? Now here's what I'm not I'm not arguing against King James. It is one of the best translations. It I'm is. not arguing with that. I'm not telling you to put your King James away. I'm not telling you that. So why do you believe that translations are okay to read? Now that's where I'm trying to go where I'm trying to go. Is I'm not trying to take and put down the King James. Because I continue to preach from it, but I, but but is it why do why now do I believe that it's okay to read from another translation? Number one, when a person has a desire to know God's word, when a person has a desire to know God's word, really, Bible translations are inspiring in the sense they help us get a better understanding of what we are reading. Now follow me along. When we read another translation other than the King James, they are what we are inspiring, or they excite us, and my <coughs> wife Charity will say, Really? I'm, she's over in bed, she's reading out of the New Century Bible, and she just gets so excited. She says, I finally, after all these years, I understand what Job is saying. I've never understood what was being said there. Number two, when I understood that I was to understand the Bible, when I when I learned that I was to understand God's Word. In other words, well, I believe we were to read the Bible and not necessarily understand the Bible as we were reading it. I can tell you that for the first part of my young life, when I started reading the Bible in 1960, I'm telling you, I read it because I was told that I should read the Bible, and I read it, but let me share with you, I did not understand the Bible. I mean, I understand the words. I mean, I didn't understand its meaning. I didn't understand why it was written. I didn't understand what the purpose of the Bible was. All I knew was I needed to get saved, and I had been saved since I was seven, and I didn't know what the importance of the Bible was. 